In today's video, I will be redrafting the 2023 NFL Draft class. So before we get into this video, let me remind you, we are on our way to 1,000 subs. We're almost there. Help me get there, and I will do a jersey giveaway. Somebody will get a free jersey of their choice. Also, do not forget to go to w.gg. Check out their energy drinks and their other products they have. Use code SHREDDER for 10% off your order, and let's get right into this video. In this draft, we're not necessarily going to make all the trades that did happen in real life. Namely, the Houston Texans trading with the Cardinals to get to three to take C.J. Stroud, then Will Anderson. We're not going to do that one because in real life, it may not happen that way again if this was to reset. Once you know a little bit about these guys a year later, all those things considered. C.J. Stroud is going to be our number one overall pick. Not much to talk about there. He ended up being the best quarterback in a quarterback needy team. Houston is still going to go with Bryce Young, though. He did have a rough year, but you can argue that that was part of the support, the coaching, a lot of factors that went into that. Maybe in this reality that C.J. Stroud is the guy who struggles and Bryce Young has a very good year himself. Arizona now, could they trade back? Absolutely. It makes a lot of sense. They have a lot of holes. However, they need a major dominant edge and there's one on the board. Will Anderson makes too much sense to pass up and it just is what it is. You're not really concerned about it either way. In this scenario, Indianapolis... They still go quarterback, but the question becomes more serious this go-round. Anthony Richardson versus Will Levis. And this is tough because Richardson looked good in the very limited amount of play we saw. Will Levis also looked pretty good over a longer stretch, but not fully. However, Will Levis did look really solid in the time he played, and he didn't have that much to work with. I, I, I am going to go with Levis here, I think. And I don't think you're no, you're really upset about that at the same time. I think it's something you're, you know, it, it can go either way. It really can. In the grand scheme of things, Levis should have been a first-round pick anyways. The quarterback value position can be the reason he was a first-rounder alone. Not to mention just the fact that he ended up being a pretty decent player nonetheless. Seattle here is in a very interesting situation because with Anthony Richardson on the board, maybe you go that route. Maybe Gino, you know, you go ahead and take a step off of him one year early. And I don't think that's a bad idea because Gino isn't a guy who's going to get you to a Super Bowl. Yeah, you have an option right here to go ahead and take a really good potential quarterback here for the future. A guy you saw play a lot. And it's either that or stay with Gino and draft either Witherspoon or Carter. I think that's a big option here. I'm probably going to have Jalen Carter being the pick here. They do, Witherspoon was great. But Carter was also very good. And Carter, to me, is a bigger position of need for this Seattle team. Their front seven is pretty bad. On that front line, there's not much to really brag about. Jermont Jones is a pretty solid player. That's about it. Not a star. You have the two middle linebackers who are off contract as of now. But it's just nothing on that line that you're really standing out for. Detroit quickly is going to grab up Devin Witherspoon. They needed that this year. And it's just an obvious pick for them, no doubt about it. Vegas here is also going to rush their pick to the board. Anthony Richardson makes way too much sense. Aiden O'Connell ends up being their quarterback for the rest of the year. Let's keep that from happening, or at least try to if he stays healthy. Anthony Richardson just makes way too much sense here. No doubt about it. Atlanta, they're in a very interesting spot because could they use a receiver, a more dynamic playmaker? Yeah, Bijan Robinson is still Bijan Robinson. They could potentially use a second corner. They could potentially use an edge rusher. All these guys make a lot of sense. In this reality, I am going to go with B. John Robinson being the pick still. It just makes way too much sense. And he's just a dynamic playmaker. Whether they used him correctly or not, he, he makes too much sense. And the value of the player at the position is not that bad. Now, Chicago. If this pick, they end up going Darnell Wright. I think that was a bad pick with a lot of guys on the board at the time. I think you have a lot better offensive linemen. And to me, you're going to go with the best offensive linemen available here. You're going to go with a guy who can really play anywhere you need him to, and that's Peter Skaronsky. To me, he just makes too much sense. He can slide in the guard if you want. You can play him at that right tackle position. You can play him at left tackle. It doesn't matter. He'll do all of them, and he'll be good at them no matter what. Peter Skaronsky makes way too much sense, and that was a botched pick from the start. Philadelphia now. This is a spot I think we're going to see a trade. Philadelphia is, they love some of these guys, and you know maybe it makes sense to go get a Christian Gonzalez, but he does last in real life. And I think you have other options here. To me, I see a team not too far back from uh, Philadelphia that just 
they need this edge rusher here available. They need Tyree Wilson. He may not have had the best rookie year overall, but in the grand scheme of things, the position is too valuable and they have too much of a need. That's Houston. We're going to get them jumping up to grab this pick here. Let's see. Too much, not enough. We'll go a fifth, a sixth. All right, we got to get a little more than that. A third. Come on, there we go. We get the pick swap. Houston is on the board, and they're going to go ahead and take Tyree Wilson. They just need the value, and it makes too much sense for them. He probably doesn't land there if not. Tennessee now. To me, it's either a receiver, it's a tackle. Paris Johnson Jr. is on the board. We're not thinking about it too long. Makes way too much sense, and it just, he's too good of a player to pass up here as well. Philadelphia back on the board. They're going to go ahead and nab Christian Gonzalez. They do end up needing a corner pretty badly. He's a really good player, and you're just not worried about it. You, you got a guy who, if he stays healthy, he looked like he might have been on the fast track to defensive rookie of the year, and it makes way too much sense. Green Bay in this slot does take Lucas Van Ness in real life. Didn't use him too much. I think they go a different route, and they go get a receiver who, at draft time, wasn't the biggest name, obviously, but turns out being a really good player. Where is he? Puka Nakua, the first receiver off the board in this reality, had an amazing year and just is honestly a no-brainer for a Green Bay team who needs some receiver help. This New England spot here, though, is going to be a funny one. They're going to do exactly what they did last go-around. And that's because it's Bill Belichick, and he's trying to be stingy. Pittsburgh sees their guy. New England, you know, they, they're doing what they're doing. We get an easy swap here. And Pittsburgh, I mean, they needed the position. The guy's there. Broderick Jones makes way too much sense for him to let sit on the board, let New York take him. New England is able to also take him away from New York. Makes way too much sense overall. Here, you have an option for offensive line for uh, the Jets. They need a tackle. It's darn all right. It's Anton Harrison. I don't think there's really another option here. You may argue, yeah, no one. You're not arguing anybody. Maybe Dewan Jones, but not really. To me, Anton Harrison's better at the left side. You go with him because that's your need. The Jets needed a tackle. They ended up going with Will McDonald, a very just spur-of-the-moment pick, you could tell. Uh, they were pretty messed up about New England messing all that up for them. Washington here. They are going to land the perfect end of their mistake they made in the first go-round, and they're going to easily take up Joey Porter Jr. The secondary was a big, big mess for them this past year, and Emmanuel Forbes was kind of at the center of that, was not as good as they hoped he'd be. Joey Porter Jr. was almost a lockdown player throughout this last year, and it just makes a lot of sense, positional need, all that considered. New England here, they're going to do a very, very un-New England-like thing, and they're going to go receiver. That's just who. You've got four guys available. Uh, I think Quentin Johnston is not their kind of guy. Addison, Flowers, or Njigba on the board. To me, Jordan Addison's best player available. You go get him pretty quick at that. Detroit. They have already had one pick. Devin Witherspoon here at pick six overall. Now is the option Jameer Gibbs. That does make a lot of sense. You also have a big needed edge. And David Montgomery was really good too. Lucas Van Ness on the board. Nolan Smith on the board. Miles Murphy on the board. You also have some guys who went a little under the radar and had really, really good seasons. You have Byron, or not that Byron Young, different one. Kobe Turner is one of them. You have, there's another one somewhere. Was it that Byron Young? I'm not sure. There was there two Byron, there's two Byron Youngs. I can't remember which one's which. Either way, you've got needs, and I think you take the best player potentially available, and that's Lucas Van Ness. Him and Aiden Hutchinson, if Lucas Van Ness gets a real chance, I think he was a really good player this year. However, we didn't see that from him. We didn't see the chance given to him. I think that makes too much sense. They really sure up that defense. Montgomery still is a good player. They can find another gadget guy like Gibbs elsewhere in the draft later on, etc. The Buccaneers, they ended up going Kalaja Kansi. Had a solid season. Not amazing, but very solid. And you know, this is an interesting one because I don't exactly know what they do need. However, the receiver room was a little rough. They could go in Njigbo place. I mean, outside of Godwin and Evans, Trey Palmer's not that great. Edge rusher makes sense. Uh, you still could go Kalaja Kansi. You could go Brian Branch and make a really nasty safety duo with him and Anton Winfield. But I, I really just think, here in Tampa, I think you're sitting here looking at edge rushers. You're looking at D linemen. And to me, it makes too much sense to go with a guy who had a really, really good year. You're going to go... With Kobe Turner, he goes to the Rams later, but in this draft, we see that he's a really good player, and he's very much needed in this Tampa Bay spot. Now, Seattle's back on the board. Jalen Carter, 
a really good player. They do have that secondary, that second spot needed. Deontay Banks makes some sense. Emmanuel Forbes could still go. Potentially Clark Phillips, Tyreek Stevenson, also very possible. I think Njigba had a good season, but nothing you're just hanging your hat on. However, Zay Flowers on the board, easy grab there. Can be a nasty slot receiver, can be an outside guy. He can do a lot of things, and is just a higher value player in my opinion. The Chargers here, definitely going to be a different spot as well. You know, they had a lot of injuries. They ended up needing another edge. However, they get one later. Michael Mayer does make a lot of sense. I think Brian Branch makes a lot of sense. Clyde Jacanty can make some sense. Dalton Kincaid can make some sense. But I think an impact player, day one, Brian Branch, this, this, the guy should have gone in the first round period. He, we knew that. And then he didn't. And we knew he was going to get taken and it was going to be the absolute steal of the draft. Brian Branch to LA, a defense that really needed help, makes too much sense for them to pass on. Baltimore, they kind of just do what they did last time. They take Jackson Smith and Jigba, the best guy available. It is what it is. Minnesota, they're very upset that these receivers are gone. I don't know that they go receiver route considering Quentin Johnson's on the board. You know, Rasheed Rice is definitely an option. Tank Dell's an option. Actually, I do like those in the fit as well. I think we are going to go with Rasheed Rice, actually. I kind of didn't think about them, to be honest with you. Uh, but now that I see them, makes a lot of sense. Rasheed Rice does have a really good year and fits that same kind of position that Jordan Addison does for the most part as well. Jacksonville, who does this pick end up being in real life? That is, I don't even remember right now. They take Anton Harrison here. Okay, yeah. So they do need to tackle, potentially. They also need some help in the secondary. They also need some receiver help because their guys aren't that great. You could go a Josh Downs. You could go a, Na a Tank Dell. That's really about it receiver-wise. The tight ends are available, but you have Evan Ingram. I think you're you know you're not too worried about the receiver with this pick. It's just not the fit. Sam Laporta is available. Tight end doesn't make too much sense here. It's not a valuable position. The edge spot Trayvon Walker plays out well. We, he's only offered one year at this point. Darnell Wright being here does make sense. We might go that route. Is it just him available? Yeah, Darnell Wright. The position of need is there. We'll do that. Help Trevor Lawrence out some. He can maybe slide into guard even in this situation. The Giants. They have. Uh, Darren Waller. They don't necessarily need that. Receiver-wise, I don't know uh, that Quentin Johnson's your guy. Tank Dell could be an option here for sure. Absolutely. You also could go, uh, you know, a, a you know a bit of a projection spot and take a Devon A. Chain. You could take a lot of things like that. Jameer Gibbs here. Brian Brissy on that interior could really help out. Kalaja Kansi. Kincaid. There, there's options on the board. Deontay Banks was their pick. You know, do they go that way this time? I don't think so. I think that interior of the D-line makes a lot of sense. However, receiver is such a pressing need that it might be too much to pass on. Jaden Reed, also a really good option here. It, it really ends up to me being Tank Dell or Jaden Reed. And I think we're going to go Jaden Reed because of the fact that he stayed healthy longer. Uh, you know, Tank Dell, nothing against him. Very good season. Very good player. Expect to see a lot of him in the future. But Jaden Reed here makes too much sense. A lot of receivers coming off the board. Dallas. I think you have an option here to get a guy who is an absolute stud and it's too hard to pass on. Sam Laporta goes to Dallas. Would be an absolute nightmare to look at him, C.D. Lamb, and all the other options they end up having. Absolutely ridiculous pick there. Buffalo here. They could go back to Kincaid. And that did end up being a really, really good pick for them. However, they have so many defensive injuries I think it's hard to pass on defense here. Interior, Brian Brissy, Kalaja Kansi makes a lot of sense. Deontay Banks being on the board makes a lot of sense. However, uh, Tyreek Stevenson here probably is the best option, best played out career so far. Buffalo needs that cornerback help, that secondary help, period. Makes way too much sense. Cincinnati, wow, this one could go a lot of ways. Jameer Gibbs actually looks like a really good option here. I kind of like that a lot. They literally sit Joe Mixon every year the last part of the year anyways. I like that slot a lot too. Makes a lot of sense. Feels like it's too good of a player to pass up on. They end up going Miles Murphy, and he doesn't even play too much. You know, none of the safeties really matter enough. Corners, you're not really hanging your hat on much here. They take DJ Turner later. Cancy or Brice wouldn't be bad. Mayer or Kincaid would also be really nice. I think we're going to have to go with Gibbs, though. He's too good of a player. A-Chain's an option, too. However, he does have his own issues. Jameer Gibbs makes too much sense. 
He's a really good option, and you can even work in him and mix him at the same time as they did in real life. New Orleans, they went Brian Brissy here, but they have a lot of potential options here, and I think Dalton Kincaid makes way too much sense. They needed some help with uh, Derek Carr's first season, and the tight end position is just lacking in general. I mean, Jawan uh, Johnson is a solid player, but he's nothing you're just elated about. Dalton Kincaid is an absolute playmaker and a really good position of uh, need here. They get Christian Gonzalez early, the Eagles do. Nolan Smith is once again available. Miles Murphy is available. Oof, this is a good spot to be in. Quentin Johnston, Kalijah Kansi, Brian Brissy have all fallen. That would be a really nice one here. The interior O-line, Osiris Torrance, John Michael Schmitz, both available, both potentially needed, but not yet. We're not there yet. I think you've got the D-line. It makes a lot of sense. You're not really worried about the running back. They get DeAndre Swift. He does well. You could go a Tank Dell for a slot receiver, but I just don't think it's that pressing of a need. Linebacker is an issue. Jack Campbell was really solid. You also have, uh, you know, uh, well, that's really the only linebacker that makes tons of sense in the first round. Drew Sanders didn't play enough. Quarterback, could you double dip? Maybe not the most needed. I think here you're going probably Brissy or Cansey. And I think, to me, Cansey just makes too much sense. A really good value pick as well. Kansas City here. What are the receiver options? Quentin Johnston, that would be interesting. Jalen Hyatt, that would be interesting as well. Josh Downs, Marvin Mims, Tank Dell. There's options here. Is there anybody of bigger need, though, more pressing value? Clark Phillips would be in it. They would, that would be a very Chiefs pick at this point in this go-around. I, I don't really see anything else that stands out too much, though. I think we do go receiver here. Quentin Johnson's upside with Mahomes would be different. And him being here makes me want to take him. He does have that really high upside, you know, the, the wide receiver one, you know, proto, uh, prototypical guy. Makes a lot of sense. But just the output we saw from Tank Dell, Josh Downs, makes me a little bit more want to lean towards them. I'm going to go Josh Downs here. He ends up being a really, really good player, and he stays healthy as well. That's a big part of it. And the Steelers, this is technically the second round, but they are at 32. They're very upset that their guy Joey Porter Jr. is not here. However, there's options. You could go get another edge. You could get another corner, Deontay Banks. There's also Clark Phillips. Uh, he makes a lot of sense here. Emmanuel Forbes is a potential option. You know, they really could reset the O-line. Go Osiris Torrance. John Michael Schmitz landing here in the interior line. They do need a center. That's a that's actually a very intriguing one here. He didn't have the best year, but as a prospect, a very good player. They're not going tight end. Brian Brissy, they could do something there. Keanu Benton, they get later. I think there's other options later. Devon A. Chain, they're not in need of. There's nobody in the tackle position they really need. Not needed. To me, it's either Deontay Banks, Emmanuel Forbes, Clark Phillips is another really good option. You could go Brian Brissy. I don't think you're going quarterback now. Definitely not. Or you go John Michael Schmitz. I think you try to invest in more spots than just the O-line. So Brian Brissy. Or, to me, I think the corner available, you're going to go Clark Phillips. He had a really good season. Uh, and also, he fits that, you know, he can do that nickel role that Pittsburgh does really like. Emmanuel Forbes, though, in a different role, may be better. Same with Deontay Banks. The upside has got to play in here. I think they go Deontay Banks here. Still get a cornerback, but the upside of the guy from Maryland just makes too much sense. And that's our draft. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below of this redraft. Did I miss anybody? Did I forget anybody? I may have, honestly. I'm recording this at 10 o'clock at night, so there's a solid chance that I may have forgotten about somebody entirely, slipped down the board, even though we know they shouldn't have at this point. Once again, just a reminder, please uh, subscribe. We are almost to 1,000 subs, and I will be doing a jersey giveaway when I get there. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.